Soup. Welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today with Aaron the Nerd Soup Monkey and Teddy, and we are back to review the Season 3 finale of The Boys. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to be an audio-only version of our review, and probably the only version of the finale that we upload, because we are actually out of town. We had to record this a few days before the finale actually dropped, so we wanted to make sure that we got this out uh, on time. Didn't want to make you guys wait for our return. And of course, you can listen to this review not only on YouTube, but on Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and much more at nerdsouppodcast.buzzsprout.com. And we will be back for a Season 3 review, which will feature some animation and some clips, because our reviews of The Boys have been doing too well to not throw together a full review of this incredible season. But yeah, I mean, let's just get right into it. A very good episode. Um, thought there were great action moments, great dramatic moments that preceded the action moments. And I think a, a finish that will have a lot of people itching for season four. Um, left some characters in some some interesting positions here at the end of the episode. But like I said, uh, continuing on f- really from episode one, but the ride from episode six to this episode was just such great fun. And I thought that they wrapped up some character arcs nicely here. Not only for, you know, the, the entire arcs of some of these characters, but for the season as well. What did you guys think about this finale? I was very, uh... Uh... Disappointed. No. Excited. No. I was very satisfied with Ah. how this ended. Uh, you said it right. You want to know what, like... You want to know how they're able to do what you just said with, like, closing arcs and starting new ones? And they have a plan for what they want to do. They know they're doing a season four, so they they don't need to rush things. They don't need to... They don't need to close anyone's character too early. They don't need to focus on certain people. They can focus on the right play on the right uh, characters, but like you said, this that last fight scene was was insane. The way you talked about it before I saw it, I was kind of skeptical, but it was uh, it was. I, I think you you scapegoated me. <laughs> what? Is that the right word? Is that the right word? You gaslighted? 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 Not scapegoated? You gaslighted me hard. I'll scapegoat you in the future. Don't worry. <laughs> Once something bad happens to you, said it with such confidence. Too. I did. I had to say it with confidence. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I'm like, that fits. <laughs> it sounds right, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's another great episode, and I think it really just caps off. It's hard to even like rank the seasons because they all have been so good in their own ways. So it's like, at this point, I don't think it's even worth it to be like, well, season three might be a little bit better than two, but one's the best. But like, it's just a great show at this point. When you have three solid seasons as good as the boys have been during this run, you just have a great show in your hands. And I think it really solidified itself as the best superhero show on TV. I don't know. Besides Succession, the best show on TV, in my opinion. Better Call Saul, of course. How did I forget that? <laughs> um, but... Yeah, this... or all the other shows you two haven't watched. <laughs> you two will watch one good show, and you're like, "Yo, this is the best show on TV <laughs> I've ever seen in my that life." I've, watched. <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. I mean, yeah, of course. It's who cares about everybody else? I'm dealing with me here, but um, I think this sh- uh, this finale was definitely because after Hero Gasm, I was ex- uh, I, I wasn't expecting a letdown, but I'm like, how do you have such a great episode and? episode six of your season like how are you going to top that with two more episodes left yeah i don't think it necessarily topped he- hero gasm but like it was up to that standard where there were some great moments like you said with the action with the comedy with the, just everything that always has made the show what it is and i think it's a very satisfying finale and yet again everything is kind of in a place where you really don't know like you kind of have, a, have an idea what's going to happen next season in terms of like where everyone's aligned and everyone's motivations, but it just keeps building and building and building, and I can't wait for it to kind of just finally pop off. But like a, the character development with Frenchie this season, he had such a strong seasons with one and two. He took a back seat. Him and Kamiko, they, they didn't really over over develop them. Maybe three episodes. They had like a lot to do with the episode you don't need to do so much with them because you have next season you can do more with them next season you want to focus in more on Huey and Starlight and Butcher and Huey but it's just that, I don't know the, the, the way they, they I think Kamiko the was uh, the heart of this season I think everything she deals with on a personal level her relationship with Frenchie and also her dealing with getting rid of the compound V and then deciding to inject it once again to get her powers back so she she really you know the balancing between the good and the bad and being a hero and not a hero i thought was really well done as it pertains to her character yeah uh and you got a lot of that with frenchie as well with with his past you know he has the moment in this episode where he says his dad put a chain around him or put the leash around him and then it just 
change his hands. So he's <laughs> demanding Very health dark. care for the boys. <laughs> oh my god, that ending that was hilarious. <laughs> Should have paid vacations. <laughs> But it's comedy pepper. It's the peppered comedy like that that makes the show great. The boys going to take down Homelander and Frenchy SPTO. <laughs> Pay time off. He's out. <laughs> he's out on vacation. I can't make it. It's your next week. <laughs> but it was that kind of comedy that, that was peppered in throughout the season. That was perfect. Like they didn't overdo their comedy. Their, uh, their selected comedies was perfect. Yeah, I think so. I think they always pick the perfect things to make fun of. Yeah. Uh, the things that they parody in a lot of the cold openings throughout this season. You know, that could get annoying throughout the season too where oh yeah. They're like where they're just playing off of current events, but they don't they do it to where it's funny. <laughs> like yeah. they, they just do it perfectly. It resembles our world, but it's not our world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't get it's not ever too it is on the nose, but it just makes you laugh. Yeah. Like the imagine video. It's not something you're expecting them to do, <laughs> but just it just comes out of nowhere. It's so funny though. <laughs> But I thought the opening scene of this episode may have been the best scene of the episode when Homelander does find Ryan. Um, that it looks like it's going to be such a fascinating relationship to keep an eye on in future seasons. But, you know, we always talk about how Homelander, all the bad things that he does, and we're always calling him a psychopath. But I think deep down, it's similar to Cersei Lannister in Game of Thrones. His humanity comes from the love he has for his child. He wants to yeah. give that kid the unconditional love that he's never had. So when he ha- you know, when he softens his voice and tells him that what happened to Becca wasn't his fault, that was a real genuine heartfelt moment between the two of them. That's something that Ryan needed to hear. And obviously, Homelander is craving... A family, a lot of it for selfish reasons. But I do think that, you know, it's something that he's never had. So he wants to cultivate a relationship with his kid. I don't know how that's going to impact everybody around them. I don't know if that's good for society, <laughs> good for no. Aunt, Aunt Grace. <laughs> but to me, that was a, a genuine moment between father and son. It like might, I said, best scene of the episode for me. To be honest, it, it, his relationship with Ryan might be what kind of saves Homelander from going full berserk unless yeah, he I'm just, trying uh, to find like when in that conversation I was trying to find him playing a game with Ryan but it did it, Anthony Starr sold that looked very very serious I mean, and heartfelt but, like you said it's for personal uh, like selfish reasons so at the end of the day if it's still in between him and Ryan I don't think Homelander makes that sacrifice whatsoever he's still a complete unhinged psychopath he might I think I he don't might think so. I think this I is, disagree with that he and got this pulled is back him. in with Ryan sitting there I think even at the end of the episode when he decides to team up with Butcher there I think it's just him trying to latch look. on to something to make him feel somewhat normal or have that semblance of family but isn't that what of, we're all doing at the end of the day but yeah, after this, but he's already established, like, he is who he is at this point. And I, I think, obviously, you try to find things to make you feel like you're um, normal or have this semblance of family, but he's still like Homelander. I don't think this is going to bring any type of humanity to him, to him whatsoever. And if it does, it's going to be very self-contained and selfish. You see it at the end where Ryan, I was, like... I was, just, I was just saying, you know what, I take back everything I said, and I forgot that, that last scene. Like, he's still Homelander. <laughs> he um, blows that guy's face off. <laughs> yeah, that was... That's scary, man, when he just flew down there. And <laughs> I mean, first of all, don't throw something at a kid, kind of a dick no, move, yeah. but... What's scarier is that Ryan accepted it. That's that's the scary part. Oh, he was like, damn, Dad, <laughs> I feel you. I could do that, too. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, obviously, he's still going to be the same old Homelander. Yeah. Uh, he, and he's still going to bully people, and he's still going to make decisions that a normal good person wouldn't actually make. But I think a lot of the bad things he's done has always been to preserve his image, obviously, and also protect the people that he feels did care about him like even when he in episode one in season one when he destroys the plane he thinks that that's what Stillwell wanted and Stillwell's very much uh, manipulating him emotionally so it's how do I please mama so like I said I don't think it's going to be a moment where he becomes Superman where he's like a good no. guy I think what's what's more bound to happen is Ryan becomes more like Homelander and it's kind of like what Soldier said he would have done for Homelander put you in the spotlight take my place you could be the next Homelander you know you're my successor I'll take a step back because if the world loves my kid then they love me as well you know it's like vicariously living through your child so uh but like i said the way he delivered it in that moment was just he he is so good at playing off so many different emotions uh the most talented actor in this cast in my opinion i was gonna say you think anthony Starr is the standout this season as homelander well he's just the standout of the show man yeah i mean i think soldier boy was the best character of the season but anthony Starr as homelander is just never gets old no yeah any scene he's in he just takes over and that's just that's just what Homelander is too as a person. Anytime he's in the scene, he's he's the standout, and that's just what Anthony Starr's doing. Yeah, he's always <laughs> got to be the fucking star, man. <laughs>
No pun intended. The other side of that argument, the family argument, is, uh, and the other side of the whole family dilemma is Soldier Boy. Obviously, we got the bombshell at the end of episode seven that Homelander was created from Soldier Boy's DNA. So it looks like he's contemplating going back and forth. What should I do here? He is my only surviving family. He's my only blood. Um, Butcher's trying to talk him out of it in several scenes, but you know, adds an interesting wrinkle here. We, they're so similar, obviously, with their personalities and what they've been through. And another similar point of their lives is they have no one that truly loves them, that truly cares for them in a genuine way. Um, but so much time has been lost. And I think they made an emphasis on that in this season that trying to make up for lost time is never going to go well. But um, I found those scenes to be very fascinating, those conversations between Soldier and Butcher. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it last week with the similarities in their upbringing and how, like, they just, you know, everyone in the show pretty much has daddy issues. Besides Huey, who was like, actually, my dad wasn't that bad, mm-hmm. um, even though he might have <laughs> thought he was. That's one of the, sc- like, obviously being in a room at Homeland, it would be super scary. But it's kind of, you kind of just know what he is at this point. Soldier Boy at this point like from Butcher's perspective is just especially with last episode him hearing voices his ability just <laughs> to explode at any time his not you don't know what he wants or what, if he's sure about if he wants to kill Homelander or take him under his wing I mean that's just fucking terrifying I would say because from um, Butcher's point of view knowing yeah. that you could have a double dose of it's like either you, you just made like the biggest super team in the world yeah. and you guys are all fucked or yeah. like your plan goes somewhat right but then soldier boy is still around so i literally a win-win but um yeah I, I think soldier boy has been and jensen eccles has been fantastic this whole season and um I, we do see him a little bit in that like, chirogenic freezer so maybe we'll see more of him in the future but if this is it for him then like you know he made a, a huge impact on the show but yeah that <sighs> we talked about it last week how they're kind of like the two homelanders very much the perception of old america uh soldier boy is really the perception of old america like all the negatives and homelander is the modern negatives of some of those aspects you kind of see that clash there and um i kind of love that seeing kind of that in play out in real time i thought it was actually really entertaining because at, right up until that point you have no idea what soldier boy is going to do because as we saw black noir is already out of the picture so he kind of got what all everything that he wanted so far so man, that was so sad man black noir that's that's what the show does great too it's just like a little thing like that with black noir a character who doesn't say a goddamn word has one of the most emotional deaths oh yeah <laughs> i've ever seen but well, you, would, you would think homelander would you think maybe he'd take one thing lightly like maybe he wouldn't snap like that and he just fucking killed his only his only uh ally what he thinks is the only ally he kills because he held a secret from him. He's that's a fucking one thing to psychopath. psychopath. <laughs> that's one thing to set off Homelander is lying to him. Yeah. It's a Civil War situation, right? Tony is mad at Steve for keeping yeah. this secret. And in the boys' world, that you're just going to get killed. <laughs> one strong punch from Iron Man through Steve Rogers' gut. <laughs> are you kidding, dude? And sorry, buddy. Um, I also think that Black Noir could still be alive. Going back to uh, episode seven, when his half his brain comes out and he yeah. kind of just puts it back in so I don't know if there's some it's sort of like Kamiko. he's got a healing ability where he, he can survive they kind of like sent that. him off though with those characters that was fucking hilarious he's like you're gonna be brought into the sweet <laughs> embrace of Christ I wasn't I wasn't on the last episode <laughs> with you guys but that whole scene with Noir and well, even his when creatures they, you know, was so fucking oh, yeah. funny really funny he man just, and then like they, it pans out to the real world and he's just sitting there and there's nothing <laughs> happening there's just nothing there <laughs> well when they first reunite I started dying laughing when they did the little hard animations after their hug <laughs> Finally, these two have each other. You know, they don't have to be alone for this fight. And then the next scene together, they just fucking see. Like it's Black so. Noir gets this killed. is what the show does so well. It's like as much as I hate Homelander and like Black Noir, obviously hasn't been the best person. Like I like that for them. Yeah, that makes, that made me happy. It, <laughs> I like that Homelander has Black Noir, and I like how Black Noir has Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> Even the cliche of no matter how long you sharpen it, it's not going to pierce Soldier Boy's skin. Yeah. Nice little uh, reassuring pat on the back there. And then he fucking kills him. Yeah. But I think Black Noir <laughs> is definitely coming back. But he, he had a really good season. Uh, even the meta dialogue of everyone sees you as this mysterious sphinx. No one can read, but I can see your face literally. literally. <laughs> I can see your face. Um, I wanted to see his face so bad. I, I hate that it didn't show his face at all this season. Yeah. I mean, obviously, th- that's Soldier Boy really fucked him up in that flashback so i think that he could survive maybe some intestines regenerating i don't sure. know we'll we'll see funny, it would definitely be a funny moment if he shows up in like season four episode eight 
you know, the finale of next year as a surprise character. Imagine the wall with the boys. Oof, that'd be tough. <sighs> Good fit. Absolutely. Yeah. Just a killer for Butcher. Oh, man. It's kind of funny. I like Noir is f- French for black. So his name is like literally Black Black. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The creative team I bought really, uh, I don't know, maybe do better. Yeah, you know what was low key funny this season? Uh, the Deep and Ashley, right? Their relationship, like how they just like they're both Trying scared to do of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> well, when they're telling that they moved Maeve, the Deep's like, "Well, it was Ashley's <laughs> yeah, idea," no. and Ashley's like, "Well, he was with me." <laughs> they're both just trying to get on his good side all the time. And you know the scene where Homelander tells them how shitty they are as teammates. Mm. That once again, Homelander in his purest form, just being a fucking dick. Well, yeah. Um, and then you know with Ashley taking off her wig. Oh, that was Talk hard about, to see. Yeah, that that is the worst thing that you can do to somebody. Just straight up embarrassing her in front of the f- people that she's supposed to be commanding over. The deep though, Chase Crawford's delivery when he puts down Black Noir's mask, he's like, uh, "Is everything all right, with Noir? <laughs> <laughs> everything okay?" <laughs> is he on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that that was a great scene, man. And even you know, A Train going back to, to visit his brother with his new heart and his brother wanting nothing to do with him and mm-hmm. we've made the point all season that a train is trying to take the easy way into doing the right thing you know he thought that blue hawk was you know bringing blue hawk to that event and the that community event would go over well and it turns into be a, it turns out to be a fucking disaster and even though the guy was a complete scumbag and probably did deserve to die his brother argues listen you know the way to get justice is to make sure that everybody knows what he did mm-hmm. a mugshot is probably more powerful than just putting him in the ground because now someone else is just going to take blue hawk's place you know it's not about- even that he wanted justice for him and now he's he got killed from soldier boy and now he's going to get a memorial, technically, you know, because right, the yeah. public's eye, he died from Soldier Boy. Not that from, is a great point. Yeah, now he'll be A-Train. celebrated as a hero. And even Homelander yeah. makes a point to A-Train to come out and say that we are the authority on justice. Um, that was a hard scene to watch. We, we talked about A-Train. That was his one line, his one kind of olive branch to being a normal person, was having this relationship with his brother that always felt so genuine. So his brother turning him, his back on him, <laughs> maybe that will set A-Train on the right path. <laughs> <'Cause> so, I, <laughs> Please. I think it's just because he's a speedster, and I like speedsters. That that is, I, I, need I to see want you to be a good guy. If A-Train never gets fully redeemed... I'm going to go back, listen to every review, and count the amount of times we're like, it's coming. <laughs> it's a coming. I need to see Change A-Train fight. I need to see the Speedster fight. You need to give me something. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we always talk about who what can we saw? take we saw him out kill Homelander. Somebody? We saw him kill the girlfriend and race. It's the only time we've seen him run. And he he did fight Wolf. Starlight in season one. Mm-hmm. And he got fucked up because of his heart. Pretty sure he oh, had a heart attack yeah, yeah, in the yeah. middle of the fight. Um... But, yeah, we'll see where he goes in season four. He's got the old costume back, so maybe that's a sign that maybe he's just not going to be so easily manipulated. Where it's, he's not necessarily a good guy, but he's not going to bend over backwards for Homelander. The speedster, that's an incredible power. And they don't really focus too much on power scaling and who can beat who and who's yeah. got the advantage. kind of just comes down to the moment, to the writing, which I almost prefer. But, it comes um, down to the fighting. If they're a better fighter, I think. they just That's how they just that, that's how they justify who wins. Well, that's like how fighter. Butcher... Because like, Butcher took on his soldier boy for a little bit What's and the, there's no way he's stronger than him that's like the argument like if, if Batman had Superman's powers like Batman would absolutely fucking destroy Superman yeah. just because he's just a better fighter he's not as strong obviously so that's where Superman has the advantage same thing with Cap and Iron Man Cap is the much more skilled fighter so when it comes down to hand to hand it's not even a question so when Homelander does ha- I mean when Butcher has those powers and especially what we know about Soldier Boy like faking pretty much True. Uh, all yeah. of his accolades and didn't think of that. He's not, he wasn't really, never really a fighter. Like, uh, well, he was fucking them up and at the end there. <laughs> yeah, Kamiko well, tried to get a hit on. He was taking him. He just shots fucking, though too. No, he was definitely taking shots. I I thought that Mave training really showed in that fight. Absolutely, because Homelander never has to fight anyone. Right, he's always so lazy with the way he uses his powers. Hero Gasm was the first real scrap we've seen him in, and he was pretty good. But he was overwhelmed by there. And I think with Mave, maybe she's not as strong as him. But she was able to duck and dodge and mm-hmm. sort of maneuver, play dirty, and catch him off guard. Yeah, what really happened with him? He just used his strength and like choked her and poked her eye out. Yeah, but, did, did, did but he really I also get think on her? he was very dismissive, and I think the way he was yeah, delivering he was. those lines, like "Stop, Mave." Yeah, stop, not now. Like she's a kid that wants to play. We've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> got to go take care. I'll come back to you. But Mave had some like, I mean, going back to season one when she goes through the Brinks truck. 
And even earlier in this episode, when she breaks out of the security thing. That was shot so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love when they don't show us, and it's just noises, people getting their necks snapped, (laughs) and blood on the windshield, and Maze out. Mm -hmm. She's so funny, dude. When she saw Huey, she can't even hold it in. (laughs) Just looking at him makes her want to roast him. Yeah. (laughs) When she said a neon sign that says, I'm a bottom. Yeah. Raw dog (laughs) me, I'm a bottom. (laughs) Same with uh, the soldier when he wakes up. (laughs) Where's the cum guzzler? (laughs) (laughs) They're just so mean to Huey. Even Butcher is like, I'm going to save your life by knocking you out and locking you in a public that's bathroom. That's like, for Butcher, that's like the sweetest thing ever. 100%. Yeah. He says, it. he says it. He's like, in the worst way, he saved me. <laughs> well, that's his way of saying I love you, right? It's yeah, your 100%. spinning image of my brother Lenny. So it ends up being sweet. And Huey, they've got such a connection now that Huey's able to still see the good inside of him, even oh. in, with a moment like that. <laughs> that was last episode, right? When Butcher goes back in time? Yes. Brain- yeah. I, was, I watched them back to back, so they got bundled together yeah that was a great scene I just yeah, wanted to, I just to say that now so good and we, we wondered on our episode 7 review what decision was he going to make and I think he shows it a couple of times in this episode you know the big confrontation there at the end they have Homelander dead to rights and he decides to attack Soldier Boy because he doesn't want to risk Ryan he still has that connection to Ryan Homelander and Butcher both laser eyeing Soldier Boy was fucking insane yeah the look they gave they each other, gave each other like, yeah. uh, did we just team up? <laughs> Are we best friends? <laughs> no, no, Mother's Milk. We established that last yeah, episode. Yeah, we did. And Todd. Where was Todd? What a great season stuff. he had too, man. <laughs> Forgot we put Todd in there. Bro, when Storm, when, it's so funny, Mother's Milk with that big ass gun he carries around. <laughs> yeah. I started dying when he was like, the most important moment of my life and I'm leaving it up to Euro, coked out Euro trash. Yeah. Shit's baffling. <laughs> well, even like going into that when obviously they got... Well, Maeve threw out the, the gas, right? There's just the different motivations going into like that battle. Everybody wanted something different. Either we kill Soldier Boy or we got to kill Homelander. Um, so that I think that was an interesting wrinkle where at the end of the day, they turned all turned to Soldier Boy um, as a, just a way to kind of actually being heroes. For obviously Starlight, we've seen her in the past, like her want to, like, and her genuine want to be a hero. But I guess the biggest turn was Maeve making that decision to forego all of her personal gripes with Homelander and do something that's going to save lives. Um, she said it too. She's like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> she went and did it. <laughs> she's great. I know. I'm, I'm happy she didn't die. Yeah, she got out. But she's like, she's like, good ending for a character, full arc. Now she can live happily. Unless see, they need her for something. The big test is going to be if they bring her back. Because they, they have no need to bring her back. They close it out, and let's see if they keep that door closed. I think they wrapped up her arc nicely. Uh, yeah, I've 100%. always wanted more from that character in terms of her role in the narrative. But this was such a satisfying ending, not only for her arc throughout three seasons, but just for this season as well. Um, now she has two of the best fight scenes of the show, right? When she shows up <laughs> to pound on Stormfront. Yeah. To me, that's still the best moment for the show. Hey, Kraut gives me chills every time it gets me so happy but now this moment you know getting her licks in on homelander obviously it was such a brutal fucking fight you know the way he takes out her eye and yeah. she's just using everything and he's just like why is this bug still buzzing around my ear <laughs> and then she does kind of fuck him up there at the, the end ear huh? thing man Ooh, yeah that hurt yeah, my nasty. ear watching that yeah that's a that's a kind of good way to get at superman right you fuck with his oversensitivities yeah um, but yeah, she does make that sacrifice. And you have to think maybe in hindsight, you know, for Butcher becoming a hero there at the end to save Ryan, maybe it's a little too late, right? Because it's yeah. in contrast to the ending of season two when Butcher takes Ryan's hand and they walk away from Homelander. Now it's Ryan taking Homelander's hand and walking out of the room. But for so Bear- you putting all of this in motion, yeah. the ending ends up just Ryan and Homelander being on good footing. I was trying- That's like the worst possible ending you could have imagined. But I think for Butcher, that's still a better outcome than Ryan dying. Like, he genuinely, I think, cares for Ryan. No, definitely. And- but you know what would have been better? Not doing any of this. <laughs> What was his play, Because though? freeing Soldier Boy just gave Homelander the opportunity to be this better man in Ryan's eyes. Where now, obviously, they had the great moment in the beginning of the episode, and then he saved Ryan. So he says, in the, uh, I think in episode two or episode three, it's probably if I just leave well enough alone and not fuck this up any further. And then they kind of do. Because <laughs> even the position of Newman, right? That's what 
gets the ball rolling as Huey discovers Newman's a soup, so they decide they need to take her out, take out Homelander on their own. That They can't use the government, they can't depend on every, anybody else but the boys. And then Newman ends the season as vice president. <laughs> so <laughs> she's in charge of a very powerful bureau, and now she's a heartbeat away, as they like to say, from the presidency. And she's got this relationship now with Homelander. Yeah. So you've left off with all of your enemies in stronger positions than you. Butcher's now dying. They don't even trust Butcher anymore. You know, he shows up at the end. They're like, this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, no, Starlight's the leader now. Sorry, sir. <laughs> I like that when he's drinking from the the bot Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say something cool, but then we got caught to the... To like, the new news. Let's, let's get this, like, I don't know, something butchery. Oi, cunts. All right, guys, before we get to the second half of this review, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for today's episode, Smile Brilliant. I'm sure that everyone can agree that we live in stressful times, whether it be the economy, the political climate, balancing work and home life, all of these things can lead to stress, which is the most common cause of grinding your teeth in your sleep. The damage of grinding and clenching in your sleep can be irreversible, resulting in worn down tooth enamel, cracked teeth, chipped teeth, and infections. The cost of cosmetic fixes can run you thousands of dollars, and night guards at the dentist can cost anywhere between $200 to $600. But with one of Smile Brilliant's affordable, custom-fitted night guards, you can return to a peaceful night of sleep without worrying about any potential damage to your teeth. And right now, you can visit SmileBrilliant.com and receive 20% off all products simply by using our promo code NerdSoup. Their night guards run as low as $45 per guard, plus they have a great selection of other great dental products like whitening trays, whitening gels, electric toothbrushes, and much more. So head on over to SmileBrilliant.com and don't forget to use our promo code NerdSoup for 20% off all products. So don't wait, click that link, and take care of your teeth. I just love the way they put things together on the show. Like three quarters of the show in the deep kills a VP, and you're like, "What? Why the hell would he do that?" Yeah, and then you're like, at the end of the, the episode, hell that about? they like you figure out why. Just just the way they do things. How on long the was show. he in that pool for? I know. <laughs> well, what did he uh, when he Homelander whispered it to him, and he's like, "Isn't that treason?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Homelander's like, "That's a big word." <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so fucking funny, dude. Um, the, the deep washing uh, his wife at the end too the yeah. in too deep book <laughs> yeah. I wonder if now he's going to just become full on megalomaniac I'm just going to be whatever Homelander wants me to be oh, 100% very cruel very unforgiving in his ways right because that, that's something that could set him off right you build him up uh, tear him down build him up tear him down again mm-hmm. right just comes back as a pure fucking psychopath I, I wouldn't mind that turn for that character going full on villain he needs somewhere to go next season I mean he's not a good guy obviously no. but yeah I, I want to see him become try and take on maybe the noir role yeah. like okay noir's gone I need to be the An badass fighter somehow, yeah. right walk around with sharks on leashes and shit yeah, but he'll do it and just be like a he'll fucking do an octopus. moron. <laughs> yeah, no, it would just blow up. That would actually be funnier. He's trying yeah. to be a badass and it just yeah. blows up in his face. He Every stops time. talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full on mask, yeah. right? Um, Chops off his arm, puts a fucking hook. That actually be badass. <laughs> yeah, even leading up to that conversation when they're trying to, when Homelander's trying to talk to Soldier Boy about kind of like, you know, this is everything that we ever wanted. And he just calls him a fucking, what do you call him, a pussy? Yeah. Yeah, and they can't even see how similar they are. Yeah. And I think you brought it up with Soldier Boy. It's a lot of that old school Gary Cooper, cool, calm, silent, repressing all of your emotions. But you're still just as fucked up as Homelander yeah. is. You still have those daddy issues when he talks about everything he did for his father's approval and still couldn't get it. And now here's Homelander not getting his father's approval because he sees him as this sniveling, weak pussy who's just mm-hmm. craving affection, craving attention, as if that's so wrong. You know, something yeah. he's been yeah. starved from for so long. So they can't see, you know, they, they're they looking at each other. It's like looking in a mirror, but they still see different people. Well, I guess for Homelander, he is the one who wants that sort of connection, but Soldier Boy just can't get down with Soldier Boy wants it too, though, because he didn't have it with his dad. He anymore. wants it in his own way, yeah. I think. Um, and I, I, th- there's still definitely a part of him that resents who Homelander is. Yeah. Right? He wanted the uh, opportunity to raise him and then put him in the forefront, but that was taken from him, so he has this no connection to Homelander. Well, as Homelander as mirror- wants everything Soldier Boy had when he was there. That's what that's what Homelander wants. As much as the mirror is like the, I guess, like some of the negatives of America, and also I feel like they both encapsulate the like the. Ne- uh, the differences in like toxic masculinity from the old school and the new school. Oh yeah, which I mean, kind of are the same. 
<laughs> most of the most of the negatives stem from a lot of those traits. And I think that um, well, it's Reagan and Trump, man. Like, I mean, like, not to get too political, but it's the cool guy, yeah. you know, great at speaking, every the Marlboro Man whole persona, but still doing horrible things. And then it's well, I mean, at the end, the, literally kill a man in Times Square wouldn't lose a vote. Oh, right, right, yeah. No, they straight up, yeah, wouldn't lose a single vote. <laughs> Yeah, Todd's the first one to fucking cheer, right? <laughs> fucking asshole. Well, we've been waiting for that, too. When is Homelander going to snap? Right? Out, in the, out in open, yeah. Yeah, we're thinking that's going to be the moment that um, turns everybody against him, but him displaying his power. Yeah, he wasn't ready for that. He wasn't ready for the fucking cheer. No, he, he did it, yeah, and he was yeah. like, oh, shit, what did I just do? When you, when it's you a said, dream, right? <laughs> when you yeah. said that after the episode and I clicked in, I'm like, because usually like some of the parallels are there, but like I didn't really put that one together. I was like, holy, I'm like, yeah, that's that's what it is. Yeah, and Ryan's smile too at the end. <laughs> that's that's, that's worse. But you're <laughs> fucked up, like shitting on him in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Next really season, Ryan six seven. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be like Baron. It's gonna be a fucking that's gonna boss. Be, that's gonna be like my biggest like uh, curiosity is how is how much they age Ryan, or how much he does age in general, because he's going to be the same actor, I'm assuming. Good actor. Oh, yeah, he was a he's good actor in season two. He's been a good actor in, in this season as well. Going into season four, what is that relationship going to look like? Uh, what's the time jump going exactly, to be? Because yeah, yeah. now Butcher's got a ticking clock. Um, Did the doctor say it? I don't remember. Did the doctor say how long he had? 12 to 18 months. Okay. Yeah, he came in, he's like, shoot me straight, doc. I got that dog in me, don't don't I? It's like, nah, you're dying. Showing him his x-rays. Actually, it's just a tumor. <laughs> Multiple tumors on your that's, brain. That's growing by the year. By, by the I don't minute. Know what it is but about. is it a dog-shaped tumor? <laughs> Ripping cigs in hospitals is pretty badass. He is so badass. He's so good at being... That's another thing that could come off as really cheesy and corny, but they got the perfect guy for Butcher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The horrible English accent, but to us Americans, we love it. We're mm-hmm. like, this is... This is how finally, they speak. Yeah, it finally sounds cool. I know. <laughs> All the British slang and calling I'm gonna people... I'm going to start saying, oi. Oi. <laughs> calling people gov. <laughs> shit is so funny, but... What Butcher has done for oi and cunt is... Oh, he made cunt. He made cunt cool. I want to say cunt. He changed the meaning of cunt in America. Well, Braun almost did. Braun, yeah, he came close. And Tyrion. But I think this might put it over the edge. Just the way he says it, it's just like it's so endearing. Like, oh, you you (laughs) cunt? (laughs) Yeah, it it clearly just means a person who's just a cunt. Yeah, he's Mm -hmm. just a dick. Right. But not a dick. They really went three for three for seasons and eight for eight this season. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, every season, I mean, at the very least, it's a nine out of ten. Yeah, you know, it's it's so hard to make a perfect season of television. So that's why I like to use the ten point scale for TV, especially with the cast like this. But they do such a good job of balancing all these characters. You may have some nitpicks. Maybe some characters should get a bit more spotlight. But like I said, the way that this season and seasons prior have come together in the end is always so satisfying. Yeah. Where it feels like a conclusion for the season, but the main story is still going on. You know, they every finish has been so epic, but there's some loose threads. There's some breadcrumbs that are going to lead you into the next. I mean, they're major at the end of this season, right? You know, um, oh, yeah. Because season two, you kind of uh, predict there's going to be some peacetime and see how these characters are adjusting to this newer world. Would they have one episode? Of peacetime, <laughs> yeah. you know, it always starts like well, you know, happy go lucky, everything's going great. Life but is good. Season four, you have to get right into it, right? You would you, have to you imagine, yeah. yeah that especially like what you said with his, with Butcher's timeline, where you don't have that much more time with Butcher. Yeah, well, and I think that puts a you know, we can start guessing that maybe this will be a four season, five season show. Do you think they're like still scared? Obviously, they're going to be scared of Homelander, but you think some of that is like he almost got you almost bested him once. You bested Soldier Boy, which is Homelander light, but still a fucking problem. You bested Soldier Boy with Homelander, though. Right, true. With his but, hope. And, like, I don't know, Maeve also was able to, like, I don't think he has that... Dog in him? <laughs> anymore? <laughs> Never had that dog in him. <laughs> um, but I don't think he's he has... a command the same fear. Yes. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've seen him... Definitely. With you make the bruises. a god bl- uh, bleed, right? Yeah. So that's what they say in Iron Man 2. Unless you drop a line like all that for a drop of blood, then I'm That's even more, thought, more yeah. scared of you. <laughs> yeah. um, that was more like an Iron Man 2 moment. I thought he was going to say some shit like that, like give a smile. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you made me bleed. Time to turn up. Turn like, you into a fucking y- bag of pretzels. You know, May was handling him a little. So, like, I think it goes to show um, if you got enough allies with Starlight, maybe A-Train. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Please, A-Train. <laughs> grab a couple other, you know, fringe heroes. Who knows what you could do to him. Well, it wasn't wonder, French Heroes, though. Starlight was OP'd because of the, the fucking surge that Huey did. 
That was a great moment, too, when he's contemplating taking the V, but... I've never been more attracted to a character on this show than when Starlight started flying. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was when so When Huey turned the lights off? <laughs> when Huey turned the light. When Huey got naked at Hero Gasm. Uh, <laughs> that was so cool, man. Yeah, she Re- was... Like, Red Letter yeah. Media, really cool. Uh, yeah. Just to see her flying, all the power surging through her. Teddy goes, man, I wish that the hit was a bit stronger. That Wait, she he... actually pushed Soldier <laughs> Boy across the room. Well, like, it knocked the... her out a little. Maybe she can, like, harness that and, like, just contain it. Like, that's, that's a fuck. She's going to be a problem. That said a lot about Soldier Boy, though. It was, it was just like a flick, and he got caught off guard. Well, you have to keep in mind, no one was touching him at that point. Butcher was getting fucked up. Yeah. Butcher was handling him for a little bit, but then Soldier Boy just put him down, put Kamiko down. No one was able to touch this man. He was yeah, about to true. straight up kill Starlight. You think if he takes... I thought it was hilarious when they broke his shield and MM was like, yeah, fuck your shield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that's important to you. He loves smashing people with that shield. He was getting ready to bash his brains in with that thing. You think if he takes a regular shot of V, he'll be good to go? Butch? That's all I was going to ask. If if Huey and Butcher can handle the comp the the temp V, temp V, can they handle the compound V? I wonder if that. I wonder if that's a uh, that's possible. Yeah, that's interesting to keep. I, I mean, the line in Hero Gasm where Homelander walks in, sees Butcher and Soldier Boy together, and he says, wow, it really is all about me. And I think that's such an important line for this season, because if Butcher didn't have this tunnel vision about wanting to kill Homelander, they wouldn't be in this position at the end of the season. Like I said, I think it's a a worse off position than where they started. So I think maybe the obsession with Homelander needs to stop for Butcher, and it needs to be about, you know, how do we just fundamentally change this superhero society because if we do take out Homelander they'll find a replacement they'll find someone yeah. else and with what Walt wants to do getting rid of superheroes and just making super soldiers I don't think that's a, a great replacement and I don't even know if that's in the cards anymore but I think that they have to change their thinking away from how do we kill him with power and how do we just kill him with kindness <laughs> you kill him with like uh, like what Starlight did with uh, the Instagram live video, right? Yeah. That's probably the most effective thing that they've done that all can season. Also yeah, drive that's going to backfire. Yeah, and he's ledge. Like, right, but they've <laughs> shown this season that there can be a way to take him out if he ever does go and cross that line. Like if he wants to bring it there, then sure. You obviously need a, a you plan have the, B. The Todds of the world that still support that shit. I think that like Newman is arguably even more of a threat at this point in a higher position of power. <laughs> well, you can argue like what's, you know, public office or the private sector, which is more dangerous, but well, now you have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're both, both of them in the, the fucking, at the top of the, the top of the top. Well, this show is just... Because you know Newman's going to kill the president. 100%. Well, Dakota Bob doesn't seem very effective. I think that maybe think she could soup, maybe. keep him around and kind of pull his strings. What if Dakota Bob is Soldier Boy's dad? <laughs> well, Dakota Bob's also, I love calling him that. Yeah. He's also just on page with Vaught. He does whatever the fuck they say. So, yeah. you know, he's uh, at his rally and Homelander hijacks it, and he's probably talking about, like, universal health care and shit. <laughs> After Homelander just pushed all these far-right conspiracies, he's like, all right, now, I don't know why we're aligned, but Let's talk they about... pay my bills. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's talk about climate change. And I think that's a good balance the show has. Like, obviously, it isn't as in this instance but in other instances it is very apparent but like little subtleties like Dakota Bob and them being in Vought's pocket just you know everybody fucking sucks especially at that level of politics no matter uh, what your beliefs are but I I think Newman are you telling me the Democratic Party doesn't love me (laughs) don't get me started on them I just gave them another $15 (laughs) running out of $15 bills here guys (laughs) (laughs) Um, but let's say Newman does take the presidency. Homeland, they're top of the biggest corporation in the world. You know, you're going to need more than... Revolution. The boys. You're going to need more than that guest to take him out. <laughs> I mean, I would love a superhero confrontation, good guys and bad guys. I predicted that earlier in the season that... There's I don't not know enough if this is going to happen. You don't need it. They, they, they proved it this season. You didn't need it. Yeah, I mean, well, Soldier Boy's still alive. So that power is still in play. I don't know how... I, he's coming back. There's a thousand percent. No, he was such a great character. I think he's he's become a fan favorite, even if he is a despicable man. Uh, I saw people after episode seven. I see people like, sipping Homelander. Okay, so don't get don't well, get a lot twisted. of people um, were like after episode seven. Oh, I had to change my Soldier Boy profile picture. <laughs> Can't support him after what he did to Dumar. Holy shit! And uh, you know, watching the earlier episodes is like you guys didn't see this fucking coming. <laughs> it's not like they sugarcoated it. He's gonna come back. Right? That's going to be part of the play. He's got the ultimate 
Well, Grace um, has him. Yeah, Grace has him. Once again, Butcher ignoring Grace's calls, you know. Idiot. He's so, yeah, he's Idiot. so fucking stubborn when it comes to Homelander. So I think he does need to shake that. But I think that a, a sort of um, harnessing that soldier boy power and using that as a way to get rid of superheroes, I, I think that could be a, a good plan, a good way to end the show. A, Here's a, thing, so, a subtle funny part, too, is when... Soldier Boy finds out about like Ryan is Butcher's wife's son. He's like, "Oh my, <laughs> fucked your wife." <laughs> You're still trying to save the cunt. <laughs> so what is going on? Here. Says the brat. <laughs> you know what's gonna be interesting because like you just said they're probably gonna bring Soldier Boy back but where is he gonna stand when he wakes up that's gonna be the problem I like fuck everybody at yeah. this point well maybe he won't come back as Soldier Boy maybe there'll be a way to wipe his memory yeah or, oh, uh, true. that could make him a bit more unhinged and or that just, just means his memory will come back they get, later on in the season or use his like just DNA to the ha- power create right. somebody else yeah another fucking oh god Homelander when are they gonna re- stop doing that it's like Jurassic Park, baby. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> Just build it back. Bigger, better, more dinos. Yep. Crossbreeds. Mm. No feathers. Um, <laughs> who knows? But once again, we still have the head popper uh, from season two who escaped. So you imagine that she eventually will come back, or maybe that's just she escaped and she's done, right? That's a good way to take out Newman, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. challenge her with another popper. They've got their work cut out for them in season four, man. I have no worries that they're going to do it right, though. I'm just waiting for the season. I'm not going to speculate if they're going to do good or not, what they should do, what they shouldn't do. I think they, they know what to do. You know it was a great scene when Frenchie gives M.M. the advice of letting his daughter see all of him, yeah, the good, the was, bad, yep. telling him, yeah, you're you a broken, it, fucked man. up man, but you're also the best man I've ever known. So like you said in the beginning, the M.M.'s had a great season here, and uh, that was a great way to cap it off with his daughter holding his hand, helping him with the tapping. They made a point, especially, you know, with the conversation between Starlight and Huey. The best way to support somebody is just by being there, being open, being honest. That's how you strengthen the bonds between people. And that was also a scene that almost made me cry. Huey, Huey talking about his father, right? It wasn't about fighting back, trying to get justice. Let me be here for my son, because that's what's going to be the way to that he can have a normal life, that he doesn't have to carry on this trauma as well. That was very sweet. And knowing that it's little old Simon Pegg makes it even sweeter. It does. It does. Because <laughs> Huey was always a little hard on his dad. You know? He was. Yeah. And I think him realizing, you know, it's just about... Like he was just I trying said, to be there for him. Right. And all Huey saw was that he was weak. That he wasn't fighting for his wife. And I, I think he, you know, he saw that in Butcher, too. You know, obviously, he fucking knocks him out. But it was Butcher did the right thing. You know, He was there for Huey, saying, I'm going to be the one to finish this because I'm not going to drag somebody else uh, that I love mm-hmm. down to these pits that they can't escape from. But it looks like they're all back together in the end anyway. So let's <laughs> see it. how it fucking goes. <laughs> the boys are back. Yeah, Huey's <laughs> the one always vouching for Butcher. So we'll see if that comes back to Well, I said uh, the last time I was on, I was like, I just want them all to be back again. <laughs> and we're finally all back together. Boys are back in town. With, with girls. Right. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was great. Starlight burning the costume. Mm-hmm. Finally becoming the, the hero we've wanted her to be. You know, just run around with the boys. Be part of the gang. Eventually, I need Huey to have a costume and to not go naked when he <laughs> teleports, though. They need, like, to take it anymore. I need to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, you never know. He might take it again. Well, I love how this show doesn't do that, where it's in comics, they're like, oh, the texture of Huey's costume can also There is no explanation or any logic given to any of these powers, it's just they took the V. Yeah, true. That's all I thought, like, I don't, yeah. I do think there's an element of the powers kind of fit the person, where, uh, like I said, with Huey's powers... He's scared, he teleports. Yeah, Yeah. and he becomes naked. You know, he's always a walking uh, joke, a punchline, so every time he has to use his cool powers, his dick is out, and Butcher just becomes... A superman. <laughs> Just a manly man. Yeah. I feel like that's what happened to me, too. <laughs> you take the pictures and get the... You take V and get Huey's powers. No, no, Butcher's. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I expected Teddy to say that, not you. <laughs> if I took the V... Oh, boy. I'm trying to think of a good power. You know whose power... fit you? Whose power I've always liked was Beast Boy's power. Turn to any animal. It's not, it's not what you like. It's got to fit you. That could fit me. I could see you, you like, having Beast- Ant-Man's powers. Termite? Yeah. Big and small. Mm. I'll take that. Yeah, I could just see like a 10 foot, 11 foot Teddy. Imagine that. <laughs> I go small around like time. Shrek. I just go small every time. No, you'd never go small. Are you kidding me? <laughs> First of all, you permanently stay in your big. You make yourself 6'8. <laughs> like reasonable. <laughs> but, not, but not too big. Right. My power would be becoming invisible. 
100 percent when no one's looking <laughs> that's the typical uh, uh, skill that i can do when no one's around <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, uh, I swear i can do it <laughs> yeah that, that would fit me so perfectly everybody would have to look away while i sneak into things and no i'll bikes. get something useless just like <sighs> you'd be the kid from x-men who can change the channels on the tv by blinking I would. I wouldn't hate that. Yeah, I know. That'd <laughs> I would be perfect for, for that. that. You'd be cool. And what was so, that? What was that review we did? Was it Strange Stranger Things? If we had, if we had Eleven's powers. Yeah. <laughs> or I just change the channel. That, I, that that could be useful. It'd be a cool party trick. It's like, yeah. oh, I really wish just TV at this bar had this on. Boom. <laughs> that was a really heartfelt moment. I thought between Maeve and Starlight there at the end. You know, Maeve's, Maeve's always been so cold and standoffish. It's hard for her to open up. But she even mentions it was back in season one when she found her crying in the bathroom. That's when she started to realize, I need to get the fuck out of here. You know, I can't continue holding Homelander's water, continuing with the facade. So that really did put it in motion. And it speaks to Starlight being the purest hero in the show. It's about these smaller moments, just reaching out, trying to play on people's humanity. That really does make the difference. So. I kind of can't wait to go back and rewatch the show. I, I'm yeah. itching to rewatch yeah. season one and two, man. Even going back Especially and watching the first some of, episode, I kind of forgot what yeah. happened in season one, to be honest with you. No, there's a lot of good stuff in season one that I just don't... Like, Noir playing the piano. I mm-hmm. saw that the other day on yeah. Twitter, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's something that... <laughs> he's such a ridiculous man <laughs> in those earlier seasons. And the fucking... The nut allergy, I totally forgot in season two, when they yeah. just shoved the almond joy in his face. <laughs> and then they brought it back in season three in the flashbacks. But, no, this show has so much rewatchability, man. So much. There's so much I forgot. Do we know where Edgar is? No. He's just in the shadows. He'll come That's back to another him. guy He'll out come there, back you know, him. just lurking. If Giancarlo Esposito joins the fucking boys, I will be very happy. I think I think Homeland or Ben's the need to jump to, to Edgar. what I would really do, but... You think he, I, I think he bends the knee to Edgar. I think he realizes he can't take on the big industry. No, he does. De- when Edgar had that power, without a doubt, he did. Because um, I think he's he realized the value in Edgar. But when push came to shove, it's me or him. I'm going to get him fired. But yeah. you you see it with the way he struggled to run the company that it's not so easy as it yeah. looks. Because even Butcher, like, he's, he's a good on-the-ground leader. And put, like, he always had either, you know, Mallory on top or um, someone in that uh, bigger position of power to kind of, you know, oversee everything. Who knows what Mallory's stance is going to be after this. And if you add Edgar into the mix with all of his connections and all his knowledge and everything, I think that would be pretty sick. Me too, yeah. I would love for Edgar to become sort of a second Mallory for that group or like the legend where he's somebody that they go for, uh, that they go to for information. He's such a great actor, man. I mean, and he's so good as this character. The scenes, you need another scene between him and Homelander, right? Maybe that's going to be the scene 100%. where Homelander finally kills him. You got, I mean, such a great actor who has a lot of prestige now. And it's not like he showed up for a season and played a big part in a season and was done, which a lot of times you see. He played like little bit parts in each of these seasons. So it's kind of like, you know, why do you have him on? for? Like, obviously he's great in all those moments, but I got to imagine there's a bigger role for him to play. Yeah, I think so. I imagine that he wants to get some, maybe some revenge on Newman, right? Could have just let that go without doing anything about it. That was basically his fucking daughter. And we never saw a scene between them where they kind of talk about what she did. So maybe that's something we'll see in the future as well. If Edgar feels this personal betrayal and that's why it yeah, always inspires was, him to join the boys. All we saw was a, was a scene when it happened. And they had that little conversation. They're like in a meeting and they're trying to figure out how to top Newman. And you see like a shadowy figure come. Oi! Just stand out here. Stand out here. <laughs> so very satisfying season three. We all obviously had very nice things to say about uh, this season, the way everything played out. And I'm sure we'll come back for a sort of season three spoiler discussion where we can really just get into all of our favorite parts of the season as a whole. But a great finale. Once again, they just continue to deliver on these final episodes. Just um, do a hero gasm revisited every week. <laughs> that's not bad. I don't want to say, like, you don't, you don't, just want to throw the word perfect around for shows but i never do i do but <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna tag perfect to this episode to this season i think this is like a perfect season they don't miss and i can't wait for season four well said i can't wait for invincible oh yeah that too every time i see homeland to do something crazy i'm like uh omni man would fucking do eat his lunch in front of him while he sat pretzel yeah, style so watching him I don't disagree. You're saying it like I disagree with it. I'm just, just, no, I'm just putting it out there. All right. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for Invincible Season 2. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in a meeting. Shadowy figure comes. Oi! Omni-Man. It's Omni-Man. Omni-Man. Damn. We were making some good points in that video. 
Hey guys, Iron and Nerd Suit Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.